My name is Andy Krinsky, and it is my very distinct pleasure and honor to be able to present to you tonight the 2021 Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Dr. Richard Brown. Born November 3rd, 1955, Hartsdale, New York, where he grew up and went to high school. And then he went to college at the University of Rochester, and then his MBA at Boston University, and finally on to medical school at the University of Vermont. And after mastering physical diagnosis, he graduated from medical school. He then went on to do his internal medicine at the University of Minnesota, and then finally hematology oncology at NYU Medical Center in New York. So for a guy that seemed to thrive on cold places, it's not quite clear to me how we ended up having him in Sarasota, but we're fortunate. So how do we describe Rick Brown? Tough, demanding, stubborn, or curmudgeon? Well, maybe when he's fighting for something that he believes in, whether it be at a committee or behind closed doors, but that's not who he is. How about dedicated, intelligent, loyal, trustworthy, compassionate, and passionate? And he's passionate about many things. Clearly he is family oriented and he's passionate about his family. And he's very passionate about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he's passionate about his friends. I can attest to that. And he was very passionate about Dylan. If Dylan were looking down from us in doggy heaven, he'd be smiling. Until of course he saw that I was presenting the award, at which point he'd start growling because Dylan and I never really connected. And there are two more things that Rick is passionate at, and they are why we're honoring him tonight. One is cancer, and two are his patients. And they are not one and the same. He used to wear a t-shirt that says a lot about how he approached life, and it's how he approached medicine and cancer over the past 30 years. His involvement in hospital committees and governance is impressive, if not astounding. He has served on P&T, medical records, cancer committee, credentials, multiple, multiple quality committees, blood usage. In 2002, he was our physician of the year. Following that, chairman of the Department of Medicine in 2003, 2004, and again in 2007, 2008. In 2013, Rick was chief of staff, and for years and years, a presence on the MedExec committee. And always, always quality, where he chaired the hospital-wide committee for many years. You see, it mattered to Rick that our medical staff should be the best that it could be. Rick always a champion of honesty, integrity, and ethics, and good medicine. And then there's cancer. Decades as medical director of oncology, chairman of the cancer committee since 1997, local chairman of the American Cancer Society 2014 through 2016, and in 2017, formally named as the medical director of the Cancer Institute. Rick has been the lead physician in the planning, creation, and implementation of our Cancer Institute, which has brought to Sarasota a state-of-the-art radiation oncology center, a soon-to-open inpatient critical care cancer tower, and finally, a state-of-the-art outpatient facility. He has led the way with his knowledge, enthusiasm, vision, and a desire to have comprehensive, excellent cancer care for Sarasotans here in Sarasota. So in three minutes, I've given you 30 years of accomplishments. So I'll close with a few words about Rick the physician and his patients. He is passionate about his patients and his patients are passionate about him. He is the kind of physician that other physicians want to go to when they hear their loved ones or themselves are diagnosed with cancer. Being a close friend and spending a lot of time with Rick, I will share with you that he is contemplating retirement and that it's something that he's very concerned about, retirement from clinical medicine. He has genuine concerns about how much he'll miss it. I'll give you an example. Recently, I was with him and some other people, and he was actually talking to the other people, but I heard the conversation. And he was talking about this idea of retiring from clinical medicine. And he was telling a, a, a very short story about how special it is for him over and over again to have that moment when he might be uh, finishing either an initial consult or maybe a, a difficult uh, follow-up, where he goes over to the patient and he puts his arm 
on the patient's shoulder and he says, you're gonna be okay. And the truth is that in that moment, there is hope. There's hope for the patient, there's hope for the physician. It's a bond that he, that he has made over and over and over again with his patients. And that in itself over 30 years would be worth a Lifetime Achievement Award. So congratulations to my good friend, Dr. Richard Brown. Thank you, Andy, for those um, kind words. Our friendship over the years has meant a lot to me. Um, and I, 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 I thank you for taking the time to be the messenger here for this award. Around two weeks ago, uh, Jim gave me a call and said that I had won the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I was immediately honored and flattered uh, to be chosen. But then I came to this realization and the realization that it wasn't an achievement award, but a lifetime achievement award. And I, and I got stuck on the word lifetime. So um, it brought my attention to the fact that a couple of years ago, uh, a renowned pulmonologist in town also received this very award for a lifetime achievement. Me being me, I took all the opportunity I could to give him a hard time about how mature he had become. Well, I guess turnabout is fair play. And after 30 years at SMH, I am, um, I guess, well seasoned. I suspect that I will be receiving innumerable texts, especially from him, uh, giving me reminders of how old I've become as if with all the aches and pains I have, I need that reminder. That being said, and acknowledging that I am old and have been for a long time, then there are lots of things that I could actually talk about today. But I'm not going to speak about the meetings, the committees, and the accomplishments that you brought up because all the members of this medical staff participate to make this hospital so successful. But I, with regards to that, I just want to bring up one thing about meetings, and I want to use this opportunity to apologize, especially to Ruben, Cindy, and Jim for sometimes dragging on meetings just a wee bit longer than need be, just because I just wanted to talk. I have been known to be described as grumpy, gruff, a chameleon, or my favorite, thank you, Carolyn, or Eeyore, which I didn't know what it was until she told me. Uh, but today I'm actually going to channel uh, my other side, the side that's not frequently seen, and reveal just a few things, big and small, over the 30 years for which I am thankful. I'm appreciative of the fact that I have incredible practice partners, past and present, who have helped me in every way, professionally and personally. I could not have asked for anyone better. I would especially like to acknowledge Steve Goldman, who really took a chance on me 30 years ago and left us way too young. I'm indebted to my three wonderful nurse practitioners, Sean Bliss, Tara Seaman, and Becca Conway. These amazing individuals have been able to balance personal life, taking care of our many patients, and putting up with my craziness. Now, let me tell you, that is an accomplishment. I just love the fact that my office managers, Robin and Tab, like to treat me like an old guy. I mean, it's like I have two moms now, which is really pretty amazing, but they just like taking care of me. I am delighted at this point in my career that I have an opportunity to contribute to the development of the Jellison Cancer Institute and work with the great leadership team of Kelly Batista, Kelly Dancer, Yolanda Green, and Lori Lang. I want to give special thanks to the oncology pharmacists, past and present, for all they have done behind the scenes on behalf of our patients. They've done an outstanding job and continue to do so. And people don't even realize all that they contribute to the care of our patients. I'd like to give a big shout out to the eight Wally nurses. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again for everything you do. You guys are the best. And, I, and I'll take another opportunity to apologize belatedly because I'm not taking call, but occasionally maybe I got the phone call at night and maybe I was a little bit gruff and 
I apologize for that. Thank you for not calling Jim and letting him know that I was that way. But again, thank you for all you do. I appreciate the fact that I could go into the C-suite with something on my mind and get a receptive ear and that, yes, even from David. I just get a kick out of going into the doctor's lounge and be able to sit at a table and just strike up a conversation. And two, it's usually about the bucks and it's either a love or hate thing, but you know where I stand on that. I just love walking down the halls of Saracen Memorial Hospital and having staff just say, hi, Dr. Brown. I love the way I get appreciative letters from patients and their families just thanking. It just makes my day. And I love just sitting down in a conversation with my patients and just chewing the fat about things that are going on in their lives and mine. I am very thankful that I am a member of this medical staff. I get a sense of pride every time I walk into this hospital. I want to thank my wife, Pam, my children, Sammy and Jordan, for the love, support, and sacrifice that they've made over the years. Pam has been incredibly understanding of my hours and my craziness. And those who know me and know the Browns would say that she's the one that deserves the award. I came here 30 years ago because I believe Sarasota Memorial was an outstanding hospital and saw all the potential Sarasota offered me professionally. I did not anticipate all the wonderful friendships that Pam and I would develop as a result of my career. I guess all my expectations and more have been exceeded. I am a lucky man. Thank you very much. It is an honor and privilege to accept this award. Thank you.